Hello, it's Jennifer. Thanks for stopping by. Right now, watercolor is huge in the card making world, and I've been playing with them a lot, and I wanted to do a quick watercolor comparison today in this video. Also, I wanted to give you a heads up that we have watercolor for card makers starting over on online card classes very soon. Online card classes is something that I do with Christina Warner, and you have lifetime access to over 30 videos um, of watercolor techniques from everything from beginners to advanced. So we cover everything, and I really think it's it's going to be a fun class. It's been super popular and it starts May 5th. So you can click over here to find out more information about it. Anyways, in that class I'm going to be using lots of different watercolors, but I have three that I uh, seem to reach for the most and I wanted to compare them here. So the, the three that I'm going to compare in this video are Peerless Watercolor Papers, Hero Arts Watercolor Wheel, and the Koi Sketch Box. So I'm going to show you all three of those and you can kind of compare them. Now I did want to mention that I still love using distress inks and distress markers for watercolor. They're fantastic for it. And also some other things like ink tents and twinkling H2Os. But I've been getting a lot of questions about these three in particular, so I wanted to sh compare them today in a video. I've gone ahead and used painter's tape to put two pieces of my favorite watercolor paper, Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper, onto a cutting board. I put it on a cutting board so I can easily pick it up and move it around to get the watercolor to move or to pick it up and set it aside. But you could just work on your work surface if you want to. I'm using Ranger watercolor brushes because they're super high quality at a really good price and I'll have this all linked below in my YouTube description and on my blog. Now, instead of one big cup of water I will find it easier to keep my brushes clean if I have a container like this with lots of different spots for water so I can keep the color from building up in my brush and really cleaning it each time but you don't have to do that by any means. So the first form of watercolor that I wanted to show you is the most unique and my favorite. It's the Peerless Watercolor. This is so cool. They're actually sheets of watercolor. So it's so unique. It's something that's been around for a long time and it's still in the original type of packaging. But basically there is a high concentration of color on these and all you do is touch a wet brush or just with a little bit of wetness onto the color and it picks it up and you use it as a watercolor. So what I did was cut some swatches from the booklet that you just saw and I have put them into these pockets from Simple Stories which I have linked below. And I also put in there the name of the color so I can replace it when it's all used up and a swatch that shows what the color looks like when it's watercolored. Now you could do any kind of system with these. You could leave them in the original booklet. You could just cut out little swatches and glue them onto cardstock. But I thought these pockets would be really good because I'm going to be using it a lot and I can quickly grab them and go. But you could really get creative on how to store these. Before I show you how to use these, I wanted to show you the different packs of Peerless watercolors that are available. Uh, the original 15 colors are in the pack on the left. That's what I was flipping through earlier and showing you, and the pieces are very large. Now there is a bonus pack that you see in the middle where the pieces are a little bit smaller, but there's 40 additional colors in this. Um, and I think that's a great deal because even though it's smaller, these, um, these watercolors are on a substrate that releases the color when it comes in contact with water. So there is a ton of color in these little pieces. I think it's a pretty good value. Then there's another pack on the right that you see there. That's just some of the brighter colors in case you're interested in just the bright colors of watercolor. So those are the different Peerless watercolors available. Now let's go ahead and use these so you can see how they work. I'm just going to first pre-wet my paper. I find this really helps when creating a watercolor background. Now I'm going to pull out one of the colors, the geranium pink, which happens to be one of my favorites. It's one of the lighter colors and it's also one of my favorite colors. It's like peachy pink. I just touch my wet brush to it and look how quick Quickly, I get color to add to my paper. Now with other watercolors like watercolor cakes you kind of have to really work your brush in the water onto it to kind of release the color but with these the color is so concentrated on the surface that it comes quickly. Watch how, how I just quickly take some water pick up a little bit right from the surface of this and then it's ready to add to my project. You could pick up less color to get a softer color but I want to go with really intense color here. Now these also call these Peerless watercolors, it says on the package they're self-blending. Now that's what I really like about these. They almost have a creaminess to them that blends really well. I'm not all that great at watercolor like Christina Werner or Jennifer Raza who are also in that watercolor class that I talked about at the beginning. They can do some fantastic things with watercolor. I need a little help with it so I find these watercolors work well for me because they blend and give a really smooth look. I love like a smoothness to my watercolor and I get that with these watercolors. Now I'm going to show you some other options that don't have that smoothness 
to the final results and I'll show you those too so it just depends on what you like but for me this peerless watercolor is my favorite because it blends so easily and it, you can quickly get the color and also the colors are very beautiful and intense so instead of fiddling with this and adding more water and trying to blend it I'm just gonna set it aside and let it dry on its own and it always ends up nice so the next form of watercolor that I get a lot of questions about is the Hero Arts watercolor wheel. Now I have, the reason I use this watercolor wheel is I've had it for probably 10 or 15 years. It's a product that Hero Arts carries and I just find it super convenient. All these little trays kind of lock into each other with the lid. There's lots of colors in it. You can see I wrote some letters and numbers on here because I want to do a little color chart. But that doesn't come on there. I did that myself. But there are so many colors on here and it's super inexpensive. It's just, I found, to be a really good watercolor and I've used it forever and I've never had any problems with it. So that's one of the reasons you see me use it. I've just had it on hand and I'm pretty happy with it. So let me show you how this one works. Again, I'm just going to wet my paper here. And you can see, by the way, the Peerless is starting to dry up there. Now that I've wet my paper, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. I'm going to pick up some color here. You can see to get a more intense color, i got to really work into the watercolor a little bit more than I did with the Peerless. And you can see it's not as creamy. It doesn't start blending right away like the Peerless does. But this is more typical of a normal watercolor. Now, I have to say there are many incredibly high quality watercolors out there that I'm sure are better than the ones I'm using here, but I'm just looking to use these on cards, so I'm going for the lower end options here. Um, the Peerless is definitely the most expensive of the three, but I find that it really works well for me, so I've been using it a lot lately. Now I'm putting a little bit less color on this one so it's a little bit softer in the end, but you can already see the difference that you get between the two. This watercolor wheel, the watercolor results are more typical of a watercolor that you normally see where you see like variations in color and in depth. So if you want a more typical watercolor result, that's what you would get with this. Now I really like it. It blends pretty well, not as well as the Peerless, but again, it's more typical of a normal watercolor. I do like that there are a lot of colors in this and it's so easy to just grab and go. Now the next one I wanted to show you is the Koi Sketchbox watercolor. This one's been very popular with card makers. I know Christina Warner loves this one and she has many great videos showing how to use it and I'll link to her. Now this is very convenient. There's lots of colors. It's got a water brush. I happen to never use it. Um, I usually use my own brushes. It's got this tray that you can mix on. Um, it's supposed to be something that you could put your little paper on the top in the lid and take this and go. But I'm going to show you how to use it here just like I've done with the others. By the way, you can see the watercolor um, that I did on the left is starting to dry some more and blend. So now this works very similar to the Hero Arts watercolor wheel. Oh, look at me. Just I can't leave it. I, I can't leave it. I should just leave it, but I always have to fuss with it. I don't know. Don't do that. It's better if you don't do that. I have issues. Anyways, so the, sorry, the Koi Sketchbox, um, the colors are a little bit creamier than the Hero Arts watercolor wheel, I would say. Um, I do like that you can quickly see all the colors and it's easy to grab. The price is a little bit higher, but I think the quality is pretty good. Now I do find that the results from this are very similar to the Hero Arts watercolor wheel. Um, they don't blend as much as the Peerless, but again, you don't really want super blending normally with watercolor. You want to see some variations. I just happen to like that the Peerless blends so much. Now I also decided to fill in that fourth space and I used the Peerless again. So you can see I've got the Peerless over there on the left. I just did some blues and purples, but look, I wanted to show you how intense the color can be from that Peerless. So I just wanted to fill that in in the fourth area. So the top left and the bottom right are the Peerless. Now before I show you what these look like dry, remember that with watercolor they don't always look great at the beginning when they're wet, but when they dry that's when it looks good. So don't worry if they don't look great at first. Now this is what they look like dry. Now if you look at the two Peerless, which is the top left and the bottom right, they blend together and get this really cool effect with a really dark kind of finished line around the edge. I happen to like that. They blend together really well. I just think it's fantastic, especially for backgrounds. Now the other two, you can see the results are very similar. They're more of a typical watercolor look. So if you want something that is more of a typical watercolor, that's good quality and not a high price point, I would try the Koi or the Hero Arts watercolor wheel. If you want something that has really intense color and blends really well and gives a really cool result, I would try the Peerless. I happen to like the Peerless. I like that look, I like that feel, and I like that it does a lot of the work for me and I get these funky results. 
but I wanted to give you the comparison so that you could decide on your own also. Now in the watercolor um, for card makers class we're going to show lots of different forms of watercolor especially with distress inks and markers, ink tents, pencils and others. So I definitely would recommend checking that class out if you want to learn more. And by the way, there's going to be over 30 or 40 videos in that class of watercolor techniques. But regardless, I'll be doing more with these watercolors on my own YouTube channel. Also, these pieces that I created in this video, I couldn't let them go to waste, so I decided to die cut a bunch of flowers from them and create a couple cards. So I used some new dies from Paper Smooches, and I die cut all these little flowers and dots and leaves. You can see the cool watercolor effect on them. And I added them to a background that I dry embossed with an embossing folder from Tim Holtz. He has some new embossing folders out that have these small patterns and I just love them. They make a great backdrop for die cuts such as these. Now I also added tiny little white dots to the die cuts just to give them a little bit of interest. That's inspired by Kathy Rakusen and I'll link to her blog too. She's got some great coloring techniques. So there you have a way you can use all these pieces that you practice with your watercolors on some actual cards. And if you'd like to learn more about these cards, you can head over to my blog for some more information. And that sums up a quick comparison of three different watercolors. If you're interested in any of the products or link below in my YouTube description, you can ask any questions there. Or you can head over to my blog at Jennifer McGuire Inc. for much more information. Thanks so much for watching again, and I hope to see you again soon.